Hey guys, I've never used this particular type of grain or wood filler before, so I figure I better do a little test first. I cut out a scrap of mahogany veneer and glued it down to this piece of wood and then stained it with the same stain I used on the radio cabinets. Here's the paste filler. They didn't have brown mahogany, it was either red mahogany or walnut. I figured this would be a better match. According to the directions, you need to mix this with either gum turpentine, mineral spirits, or naphtha. Uh, I'm going to go with mineral spirits. And you're supposed to combine them until it has a consistency of heavy cream. Uh, by shaking this can, it sounds very liquidy, but I can also feel that it's very heavy at the bottom, so I suspect I'm going to need to mix this quite a bit. All the particular matter, I'm sure, has settled down to the bottom. Uh, once it is mixed, I'll uh, I'll do the mixing in this cup and I'll then apply it with the cheap brush as they suggest. And then uh, when the filler appears dull, remove excess by wiping across the grain with burlap. Now we've got some burlap here. Then remove any remaining streaks by wiping with the grain using soft cheesecloth. I just happen to have some cheesecloth as well. Then you, then you need to wait 24 hours for it to dry, and then lightly sand with 320 grit sandpaper. I figured it made a lot more sense to uh, do a little small scale test here before trying it on the cabinet. Uh, so I'm going to pop this can open and start mixing it up. As I suspected, uh, all the solids have really settled to the bottom, and the top is very liquidy. This is going to take a lot of mixing. Well, that was fun. It took about 20 minutes to finally get this to be an even consistency. Now I'll put a little bit into this cup and mix it with a little mineral spirits to thin it down a little. I thinned it a bit with the mineral spirits and then applied a thick coat and worked it into the grain really good. Now I'll wait for it to dry a bit and then start rubbing it off with the burlap going against the grain. Once the filler dried to a haze, I wiped it down going across the grain with this burlap. I'll probably put it on a bit too thick, but uh, better too thick than too thin. And now I can really see why I use burlap. Uh, the large open spaces in there really pick up the excess grain filler quite well. So here's what I'm left with. Still has a bit drying to do, but uh, definitely seems to have filled in all the pores and it's quite smooth. I'll let it dry a bit more and then use the cheesecloth if I need to to uh, get any remaining residue left. Since my little test worked out so well, I'm moving on to the full size cabinet. I've got my grain filler mixed up here and I'm applying it with a small brush against the grain. I'll work it in really good and then when it starts to dry to a haze, I'll rub off the excess with some burlap. It's been more than 24 hours and the grain filler is fully dried, so I gave it a light sanding with some 400 grit sandpaper. They recommend 320, but I only have 400 on hand. And uh, it's nice and smooth, but uh, probably doesn't look too good to you guys. Well, that's because it's very dull right now. So, next step is to spray it with some lacquer sanding sealer. What this does is um, provides a, uh, a good seal between any underlying substances and the finish coats. This is uh, this will seal away any traces of like glue or stain or um, shellacs, old finishes, whatever. Kind of like a primer, I guess you could say. But it also provides a good surface for some final sanding. It dries quickly, and uh, so I'll be able to sand it fairly soon, and then I can move on to the uh, finished gloss coat. Here it is after about three coats of the sanding sealer. I have not sanded it yet, but I will be in a moment with uh, some 400 grit. 
and then it's on to either gloss or semi-gloss. I always like to go with the gloss, especially with this Deft, because this has nitrocellulose in it, which is what they used back in the 30s. It gives you an especially nice, tough finish. But if you want to use semi-gloss, don't want it to be quite as shiny, that's perfectly fine too. And finally, here it is after a few coats of the gloss lacquer. Looks pretty good, I think. I'm done with the first pass on this side. As the grain filler dried, I wiped off the excess with burlap going against the grain. Now, there are a few areas where there's still a noticeable depression, like this scratch here and this ding here. So I think after this sets up for 24 hours, I'll do a second pass on these areas to fill them in a little bit more. After the grain filler set up over 24 hours, I sprayed the cabinet with some Duff sanding sealer and then gave it a light sanding. Now what I'm doing is something I had talked about earlier, which is blending the sides into the trim. If you recall, I stained the veneer sides and top and I sprayed the trim with toner lacquer. Now I'm giving a light spray to the sides to blend it all together. I finished giving the cabinet a final light dusting of the brown mahogany toner lacquer. And now moving on to the clear gloss lacquer. I really like this stuff. Uh, it has nitrocellulose in it, which makes it tougher. And that's the same kind of formulation they used back in the 30s and 40s. And I also really like this uh, adjustable fan spray. So what this does is instead of the usual uh, spray paint can where it comes out kind of in a cone, this will come out kind of like in a, well, you can adjust it so whether it's a wide, uh, a narrow fan spray or you can do it this way or of course at any angle so as I'm spraying this I've got to go I've got it set for a wide angle fan spray and then I go up and down up and down now if you ever use this stuff you might be surprised that when you shake it you never hear a rattle uh, that's because you don't need it with this formulation which is another reason I really like it if you get the semi gloss or the satin there is a rattle ball because they add, had to add flattening agents to actually make the finish look dull and they'll settle to the bottom so you have to shake it up really good. This stuff, because it's all pure, clear chemicals, just a little bit of shaking and uh, you're good to go. And you go like this. Maintain an even distance, about a foot. Start spraying below the cabinet and spray evenly and let go when you're above it. I also put a sheet of paper over the top uh, to eliminate the overspray. So as I spray this and come up over the top edge it would leave uh, a light dusting on top and I'd have to sand that off to make it smooth. I'll give it about four coats waiting a few minutes between each coat. Oh and the fumes are pretty nasty so it should be in a well ventilated area. I've got an exhaust fan above me actually blowing the stuff out and it's a good idea to wear a uh, type of respirator mask too. Alright, I'm finally done putting about six coats on every side of this cabinet and I just peeled off the protective uh, paper and tape I'd put on the top and as you can see, there's sticky residue left behind. That's from the painter's tape uh, reacting with the thinners and the lacquer. Easy way to get that off is some mineral spirits. Uh, the stuff won't react with the lacquer. And it does a decent job getting this off. Takes a little bit of rubbing, but not too much. I've heard you can use WD-40 as well, but I haven't tried that. So, there we go. Now, if you have 
godlike skills with spraying and you have absolutely no dust or anything in the air you might be able to call it done at this point but I always end up with little bits of stuff that settle on the finish and uh, in spite of my best efforts get some overspray so it's rough in spots so the next thing I want to do is rub out the finish but you really need to wait a long time for this finish to cure before you do that if you want it to really look good and by a long time I mean weeks in the past I would just wait a day or two in fact I just spread this a few hours ago and it feels perfectly dry but it's not really fully cured um, but I just so happen to have a TV cabinet from my Admiral 24C16 project that I did many many months ago and I never got around to rubbing out that cabinet so I can demonstrate the techniques I use on that cabinet while we wait for this one to cure up here's the Admiral cabinet I was referring to but you know what, I think I will do a separate video on this because it really does belong in the Admiral Restoration thread. So check out that video which I'll post shortly after this one to see the techniques I'm talking about. To close out this video I thought it'd be fun to get a taste of what the final set will look like by partially reassembling it. So I slid the chassis back in, minus the picture tube, and put the screen bezel on and so on. Screen bezel's coming up pretty well. I uh, still have a bit more polishing to do, but I've got this section just about done. I think it's looking pretty good. Uh, here are the knobs. I have several styles of the inner knobs, red, brown, and tan. I've got the red on here right now. I think that's what I'll go with. They look pretty good. And here's that metal trim I spent so much time getting the rust off and priming and painting. Now, there should be a Motorola logo on here. If you watch the earlier videos, you'll see that I did pry it off. And I put it somewhere very safe, out of harm's way. Cannot remember for the life of me where the heck I put it. I'm sure it'll turn up sometime. <laughs> uh, here's what it should look like. So metal cast uh, piece it has Motorola on this style so use your imagination and pretend that's right on here so in, a, in two or three weeks I will get back to this set to finish it off in the meantime I'll move on to other projects